a series of videos tailor-made to help you, yes, you personally, develop your relationship with your individual horse. Coming right up. Hello my crazies, I'm Reagan here from Horse Crazy Mama, here to help you get your first horse and beyond. If that sounds like something that you are trying to do, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you don't miss a single video. So as you guys know, currently I ride two very different horses. One is a young little chestnut, oh, I'm sorry, he's sorrel because he's a quarter horse. I don't get that still. I ride one young sorrel quarter horse and one old gray quarter horse and they're both different disciplines, they're both completely different personalities and it is a struggle. I tell you what, it's like getting on one saddle, I have to be a completely different person than I have to be in getting a totally different saddle. And it's frustrating, you know? So when I saddle up Bingo, who is the western young sorrel quarter horse, super active, he has this personality that is just huge. Like the instant you approach this horse, he's asking for ear scratches. He will not leave you alone. He has to be right there next to your shoulder the whole time, he's constantly sniffing your ear. He's constantly playing with whatever's on your head, like your helmet. He's constantly looking around, seeing, like when I tack him up, he has to look around and watch you put all of his, his tack on, <laughs> from his blanket, to his buck strap, to his cinch, to the saddle, to the bridle, everything. He has to inspect it and look at it, and he's like, what's this? Ooh, what's that? Why are you doing this? This is amazing! This is not so amazing. Please don't do that. From one second to the ne next, he's this happy, curious boy, and then all of a sudden he'll pin his ears and look at you like, I'm gonna kick something. <laughs> he's just unpredictable and just a goofball. Whereas Doc, whenever I saddle him up, for one, he hates being cinched up. He like pins his ears. It's the only time he'll ever pin his ears because he's so laid back and just lazy. He'll pin his ears and he'll like threaten to bite you but he doesn't actually do anything. You just sit there and go like, and it's kind of entertaining and you're just like, oh whatever doc, you don't actually mean it. And then you saddle him up and he just could not give a flying part in space. This horse, he just doesn't care unless you're cinching him up. But he's happy to do whatever, he'll just sit there and as long as he has his friends and as long as he has his treats, he's good. But getting in the saddle with these two horses, like, it's night and day. So maybe you guys are, you know, taking lessons and you ride a different horse every week. Or maybe you're out to purchase a new horse, and again, you're riding a different horse every week. Or maybe you have multiple horses, and you just can't figure out why one method with one horse doesn't work with another horse. But it be can be a real pain in the butt, literally. If you don't know who your horse is, and how to, to act around them. But this is to help you guys whether your horse is super unpredictable. Some horses, they're just like, you don't know what they're going to do next. You'll get on that saddle and you'll just feel like really trepidatious because you have no idea whether they're going to be really good that day or just fly off the handle and do crazy things. Or maybe you have a horse and you guys just feel like you're not clicky. You had that special feeling when you first got on their back when you were trying them out at their owner's place and you were just like so excited and just everything seemed to mesh together and just it was so amazing and then when you actually purchase them and you start working with them it's like the honeymoon phase kind of fades out and you're like oh my gosh what did I do? I don't know this horse, I don't know what they're going to do next, I don't know where is that feeling that I first had when we were first riding together. You know you have to get to know each other all over again. Or maybe you get into the saddle and you just, like your whole riding session, you spent it really, really annoyed and frustrated at this horse because they won't freaking do what you want them to do. It doesn't matter what signals you give them, it doesn't matter what, what rewards or pro punishments you promise them, it just doesn't work and you're just so frustrated that what was supposed to be a nice relaxing ride ends up being stressful and frustrating or you're really really nervous and you spend the entire time like scared out of your wits because you have no idea what to expect. 
Maybe you've tried every single other method that, that every other writer has given you advice on. Maybe you should try these treats instead. Maybe you should get your saddle custom fitted. Maybe you should try bitless. Maybe you should try a stronger bit. All this information just coming at you and pounding at your head and you've tried literally everything and nothing seems to work. Look, I'm gonna be straightforward and completely honest with you guys. There is no magic fix for this. There's just no straight up solution that you can get on the horse today and have all these problems and these frustrations and then magically overnight, tomorrow you'll get on the horse and you guys will just be perfect together and you will finally click and finally be unified and just everything will ride smoothly. That's just a fantasy. That's not going to happen ever in anything that you do in this life. But there is a way where you can at least start understanding your horse and understanding yourself and how you and your horse connect and how you guys can become more patient with each other as you both learn and grow together as it's supposed to be. So back to my story with Doc and Bingo. So I realized pretty fast actually that what I was doing, that the methods that I was using, you know, way back when I was writing Logan 10 years ago, was not working for Doc and for Bingo, obviously, right? But I realized in that moment that every horse is a completely different individual. Every horse has their own quirks, has their own personality, has their own habits, good and bad, and their own tendencies, and their own preferences. I also realized that everyone else's way of doing things with their horses isn't my way of doing things with my horses. And my way of doing things with horses isn't everyone else's way of doing things with horses. So exactly how can you fix this? I'm gonna give you four pointers on how you can deepen your relationship with your horse. Step number one learn about yourself. Now I've done a lot of study about personalities and about people and about our, our habits and about our, our perceptions on life and my, my personal preference is the Myers-Briggs type indicator. Like it's a great foundation for learning about yourself. Of course you can't really mesh people into 16 or even 32 different slots. <laughs> it's just not realistic. However it's a fantastic foundation for getting to know you and how you approach stress, and how you approach different situations, and what your preferences are. And of course, we can't go out and learn about other people and about other things until we understand ourselves first. So go ahead, take the MBTI, or the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator. I'll leave the link down in this description below, and, and then I will upload a video specifically for your personality type on how you can handle each different personality type for your horse. Step number two is to learn about your horse. Whether that's your regular lesson horse, whether that's the horse that you're going to go try out and ride, whether that is the horse that you currently own, or if you're just borrowing somebody else's horse or you are exercising that person's horse. Go out and learn more about that horse. See how they react to different things. A great method that I've seen is the horse now. Personality? Yeah. Personality by Pat and Linda Pirelli. Fantastic, it's a great foundation for learning more about your horse. Of course, every horse, you can't put them into four different containers per se, but it's a great foundation into getting to know your horse and realizing that each one is an individual. Step number three is take note of the weak points in your relationship. Maybe you guys aren't communicating very well on the ground, or maybe you guys aren't communicating very well in the saddle, or maybe when you do a particular thing your horse freaks out and does not like it, or maybe you do another thing and the horse just sits there and pins its ears and kind of looks at you judgmentally. Those of you who own mares totally know what I'm talking about, right? But when you take the time to notice those weak spots, you can't really fix what you don't know is broken. It's going to hurt, like seriously, it's really going to hurt to kind of admit to yourself that those weak points exist. But once you do realize that they exist and that they're there, then you can move on to step four. And that is to build them up, be patient, and realize that the perfect relationship is a journey, not a destination. Look, you're not going to just wake up one morning, get in the saddle, and you, you and your horse will just be perfectly one. And you guys just float around on your show jumping course or your reigning course or whatever the heck you do with your horse. <laughs> just rhymed. You're not going to wake up one day and realize everything is perfect. 
it's going to be a journey and that's the beauty of it is that every day you get closer even if it's just like 0.000001% you're going to be better than the day before and bit by tiny little bit you guys will grow and develop and nurture your relationship together. So as I got to know the individual horses, Doc and Bingo, I came to realize that Doc, according to Pepperelli's personality test thing, he is a left brain introvert, which means that he can be quite stubborn. He has his own opinion on how things should go. Uh, he's very much motivated by food, which means that positive reinforcement would probably be a good idea for him. When you want to ask him to do something, you kind of have to remind him of how much fun he has with it. And once he remembers that, he's good to go. He's he's over the top excited to work for you. Whereas with Bingo, he is an extroverted left brain horse. And that means that he constantly needs something for his brain to work on, which is why he's so curious about the world and why he's so reactive to uh, different things that he's just not familiar with. With. Or if you move around him too quickly, he's like, wait, I gotta take this in first, and then you guys can move forward. So moving slowly around him is really good. Uh, giving him stuff to think about and stuff to experience is amazing. Being sure that he gets to look at new things on a constant basis is definitely something that he needs to do. And just kind of keeping his mind going and thinking and figuring out problems and puzzles to solve. And as I realized that, we're starting to grow and we're starting to learn together and it's becoming more fun. It's not becoming this painstakingly drawn out issue that we go and we ride and I get frustrated with Doc's stubbornness or with Bingo's flightiness. It's that we're having more fun together and I understand Bingo's reaction whenever he just kind of pops up whenever we start cantering. He's just excited. Or with Doc, I just have to be more patient with him and help him realize and remember how much he enjoys jumping. As we have more fun together, we come to respect each other better and that is what being an equestrian is all about. So throughout this entire series, I'm going to have a segment towards the end, you guys, where I feature a comment or a question that you guys ask down below in the comments section. Please ask questions. I want to answer them on these videos. So I'm going to pull up a question here. This question comes from Riley Hart. Cute little name, by the way. She says, great video idea. Uh, I ride English and have never regretted my decision. Do you have kids that ride? Uh, yes, Riley, I do have two children. They, they're currently very, very new to this. My daughter is actually more interested in the idea of riding horses than actually riding a horse. It kind of makes her a little nervous. My son is completely and totally obsessed. Of course, when he fell down in the previous video, I'll leave the, the little information card up there so you guys can go check out that video. After his little tumble there, he has been a little bit nervous getting back into the saddle. So we're kind of working on building his confidence right now and helping him feel more comfortable in the saddle again. You guys are absolutely amazing. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you're ready to start this whole journey with me. I'm going to be uploading a video every single weekday in February. I'm like so nervous about this because it's a lot of work, but I'm freaking gonna do it for you guys. And be sure to ring that notification bell so that you guys are notified, you know, as, as reliable as YouTube notifications are as soon as I upload the video for your personality type and for your horse's personality type. You guys are amazing. Keep the crazy horse crazy, y'all. See you next time.